video, we want to cover three things. The first of which is how to prep and install your panels. Another thing that we'll cover is all the things that you'll need to buy for any size of a system. The last thing is the math that you'll need to know to figure out how big of a solar system you're going to need. And I know better than anyone, math sucks, but this stuff's pretty straightforward. We're Logan and Killeen. We've had the opportunity to build out two vans and now are traveling the U.S. living full time out of our Ram Promaster. Our goal is to help other van lifers get on the road, whether that's through videos like this or meeting up in person. This video answers most of the questions we've been asked about solar, so let's get to it. Behind us, this is one of our solar panels. We'll be using two of these. The 335 watt panel. It's 66 by 40 inches wide. The first thing we'll be showing you guys is how to install the Z mounting brackets. We already have them up on this guy, so we'll show you on our other panel how to put those on. Working with the back side of the solar panel, if you look, there are several holes. Excuse the mess, we're in a barn, don't mind us. There are several holes already drilled into the solar panel. So there should be two at each end about. We are going to put putting our Z-clip into the middle one just so there's more support for the middle of the solar panel. All right, so for the hardware that came with these mounting brackets, we're gonna, this is the bolt with the large washer. The large washer I bought separate, um, but you can drill your own hole and you won't need it. And then we're gonna get the Z-clip, push it all the way. And then we get this other washer a lock washer, and the nut. I'm going to tighten it by hand and then we'll get the tools and give it a good tight. Time to take the solar panels and you guys up top now. These are all the supplies we are going to be using to put our two solar panels on the roof. If you're only doing one solar panel, you will not need these. These are just because we're doing two, so if you're doing multiple, you might need more than just two of these. So this is our wire. This is a six gauge wire and it came with these little clippies at the end. Oh, this is a 10 gauge wire. Logan knows. <laughs> this is a six millimeter 10 gauge wire. It has these clips at the end. We got this on Amazon. Most of this we got on Amazon. In fact, we'll just link that in the description below if you want to see any of these things. Um, and then these are our splitters. So there's like two negatives and two positives coming from one negative and one positive. And then this is basically what's going to, you can see we already have it attached here, be onto the ground and allow the wires to go into the van and be covered up with the weather seal so nothing gets into the van. This is a butyl tape. We use this for a lot of things, including windows. And then this is a Sikaflex kind of rubber sealant that will be holding this thing down against the van. And then you will want a drill or something. We're going to be drilling a hole, of course, to let the wires be coming up through the van that this will be covering. Okay, to just get your bearings on top of the van right now, this is our first solar panel that we're putting up. It's not actually screwed in. We just have it set in place so we can kind of get gauge of the placement. Our fan is fully open and that's because we don't want the solar panel to be so far forward that it won't allow the fan to open up all the way. So we're allowing it about an inch of space. So we have that gap. And then on this side where all of our supplies are right now is where our second solar panel will go. So where we're going to put our entry point with our wires coming out is going to be about right here, right next to the fan between the two solar panels. At this point, we're just trying to make that edge a little more dull, so there's no way that it's going to slice through the wire. We're just putting something like electrical tape right now, but we will be adding some butyl tape around there too, just in case to just thicken that up. All right, so this wire, I fed it all the way through this grommet thing, and, and uh, now I'm going to feed the ends without the clips all the way through this hole, and we will connect it to our charge controller. If you notice, these didn't come with any screw holes. You're just supposed to glue it on and keep it on. So we put a lot of glue. We're going to clean it up a little and then probably put a weight on top of it. So that way we're sure it'll set good. So these wires are coming from the solar panel. They should all come with some wires and clips already on them. And then we're attaching these Y things. So it's basically a splitter. We can hook up both. Um, positive leads to the both panels to the positive and then we'll do both to the negative as well. So this one is the positive 
and this guy's the negative so we already have this panel hooked up to one of the positives and then now it is also hooked up to one of the negatives Oof. as you can see we have a very sophisticated way of keeping that in place until it dries <laughs> and then uh, while that's drying and curing we'll be setting up the solar panel and anchoring that into place so under all four of the Z mounting brackets, we're going to be putting this butyl tape. This is like a weather sealant, so no water will get in when we put the screws through. Speaking of screws, we just want you to be so careful because underneath, you can see they come down a ways. And if our wire was in the way, it would have been punctured. So we made sure to loosen up our wire there. Other pro places, it's not a problem. Like over here, you can see there's no wire. And that will eventually all be covered up with the closed cell spray foam. And then we're going to install our second solar panel the same way we did the first one. We're going to check and make sure our fan can open all the way. We're going to put the butyl tape under, screw it down, watch for wires. And final thing is to clip those wires from the panel into our splitters. At that point, we're finished with everything up top and we can take you inside the van. So now both panels are hooked up. These are the wires coming down and we ran it through the wall here and out. And eventually, once we have this cabinet set up, we'll cut this to the length that we need and plug these into the charge controller. All right, so I think that's it with uh, showing you the inside of our system. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit the whiteboard and show you how to do the math. Determining system load. The first thing you need to know is how much power each of your appliances use. This will be measured in watts. Make sure to include any charger, fan, lights, water pump, everything that'll use electricity. You'll be able to find the watt rating online or in a manual that comes with each appliance. Then you'll need to determine how many hours each day they'll be used. Multiply the watts by the hours and you'll get the total load in watt hours. We are going to add these up and although I imagine you won't be using them all at the same time, we want to plan for a bit of buffer room. Determining battery bank. You'll then take this total, in our case 1,878, and divide it by 12 since you'll most likely have a 12 volt system, or divide by 24 if you're doing a 24 volt system. The result is the minimum amp hours required for a lithium battery to run the system. Lead acid batteries will be the same calculations, but you'll need to double this number, since they can only use up to 50% of its charge without hurting the battery. So to make lead acid work for the same system, you'll need to a minimum of 313 amp hours. In our case, we'll be going with a 200 amp hour lithium ion battery. This will give us 2,400 watt hours, which leaves us a comfortable buffer in case of days of poor sunshine. Determining solar panel size. Now you'll divide the system's watt hours, in our case 2,400, by five, the peak hours in a day for solar charging. And the outcome is your minimum panel rating. However, solar panels aren't known to be 100% efficient, so I always recommend going for a higher watt rating. For example, the math says minimum we need is 480 watts, but I would recommend at least 500 for the system. In our case, we'll be going with two 335 watt panels totaling to 670 watts. This could be a little overkill, thus making the margins more comfortable for full-time living. Determining charge controller size. Now that you've got your batteries and panels figured out, divide your solar panel size by 12 or 24 if you're doing a 24 volt system. This gives you the minimum amp rating for your solar charge controller. In our case, we'll be going with a 60 amp MPPT charge controller. That'll cover your solar needs. If you made it through this math section without crying, give us a thumbs up. And if you didn't, I'm very sorry. Leave any questions in the comments and we'll do our best to respond. If you use this, we'd love to see your build or your project. So please leave a comment in the description or link in the description so we can check it out. Anyway, solar is done for us today. It's super windy and we are out of here. Yeah.